There's a growing body of empirical evidence for the concept of vocational interests. A 2016 study by Stoll and colleagues tracked 3,000 German high school students over time. Using Holland's inventory scores, they found that these vocational preferences were indicative of pivotal life outcomes, over and above what's assessed by the Big Five personality traits. So there's something unique and special about their specific vocational interests. Those who resonated with being realistic and enterprising often secured full-time jobs with higher incomes. Conversely, the artistic dimension was often associated with lower incomes and unfortunately, higher unemployment rates. But the implications extend beyond employment. Vocational interests were also associated with social and relational aspects of life. For instance, those aligning with the enterprising category were less likely to be in a relationship. In a follow-up study, Stoll's team discovered that an individual's scores when exiting high school on Holland's vocational interest test remained remarkably consistent a decade later. An intriguing finding was that any change in these scores happened quickly, typically as students started their professional journeys post-school. This could indicate an initial reality check as they begin to navigate the working world. But after this initial recalibration, their interests generally plateaued for the subsequent nine years. Another meta-analysis painted an even clearer picture, suggesting that vocational interest predicted career choices with remarkable accuracy of 50.8%, meaning if someone identified with the artistic dimension, they often ventured into artistic careers, and those leaning towards realistic pursued realistic careers. While this might seem like a coin toss, considering the myriad of career paths and unpredicted variables influencing one's choices, a 50% accuracy rate is quite significant. A similar perspective to the person-environment fit is the theory of work adjustment. We've touched on this in various segments of this course already. It's a classic and influential framework in IO psychology. In the context of career development, this theory shifts the lens from vocational interest to personal work values. The crux of the theory is simple yet profound. People tend to thrive in roles that align with their intrinsic work values. The alignment or the fit between an individual's values and the ones fostered by their organization often translates to increased job satisfaction. Naturally, when people are more satisfied, they're more likely to be committed, loyal, and consequently might experience improved career outcomes. The theory of work adjustment identifies several work values that jobs can have that influence an individual's career choice. There's achievement, a place that encourages you to accomplish things and make progress. For example, a competitive sales firm where employees are recognized for hitting targets. Comfort, a place that promotes a stress-free atmosphere and prioritizes well-being. Maybe a company offers regular breaks, mindfulness sessions, and a comfortable workspace. There's status, a place that provides recognition and prestige for doing good work. For instance, a high-profile law firm where top-performing lawyers are frequently featured in industry magazines. Altruism, a place that fosters harmony and service to others. For example, a nonprofit organization dedicated to community outreach and support. Safety a place that emphasizes predictability as well as safety, like a manufacturing unit with stringent safety protocols and a clear routine-based job structure. And finally, autonomy, a place that respects personal initiative and offers control over one's tasks, like a tech startup where developers choose their projects and set their own deadlines. Everyone values these aspects differently. So the journey is about identifying which of these resonate most deeply and seeking out roles that echo these priorities. Similar to with Holland's vocational interests, metrics for these values have been developed and integrated into ONET. So prospective job seekers can reflect on their primary values and tailor their job search to find roles that are in harmony with what's most important to them. Research in the domain of career development has frequently circled back to social learning theories, with Albert Bandura's theory taking the spotlight. The social learning of career choices perspective posits that career decisions often hinge on observational learning. Individuals make choices by emulating behaviors and roles they've seen in others. This is a dynamic perspective that offers us a lens to study the evolution of one's career aspirations throughout their life. 
And the theory's emphasis on role modeling and observational learning provides a backdrop for exploring gender disparities in various professions, including the underrepresentation of women in STEM fields, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Based on this perspective, Crumbles introduced the career beliefs inventory. This tool gauges the self-beliefs influencing an individual's career trajectory, a cornerstone of Bandura's model. An important and now quite familiar concept here is self-efficacy. In the context of career development, self-efficacy can be thought of as the individual's willingness to seek out opportunities for professional growth, even if those opportunities might be new and a little daunting. For instance, imagine a young software engineer named Amy. Despite having limited experience with a specific programming language, she sees her colleague master it relatively quickly. Inspired by her colleague's success and trusting her own capabilities, Amy takes on a project requiring that language. Her confidence and proactive approach, grounded in her self-efficacy, not only helps her learn and excel in the new language, but also makes her stand out as an adaptable and ambitious employee. Just like in other contexts where individuals set and pursue goals, Having high self-efficacy in the domain of career development has been linked to better career choices, higher levels of achievement, and more persistence in developing one's career. While traditional career theories are backed by a significant amount of empirical evidence, they're not without their limitations. At times, they might oversimplify complex decisions, potentially missing out on the range of factors that shape career choices. These factors are complex, varied, and not all of them are predictable. Sometimes unexpected events like the COVID-19 pandemic can shift career trajectories in unforeseen ways, and these theories might struggle to account for such abrupt changes. Additionally, the concept of career divergence is an area these theories may not always capture efficiently. Consider two individuals with identical interests today. Fast forward a decade and they might find themselves in drastically different careers. Why did one person take a particular career path while the other ventured in an entirely different direction? The theories typically fail to account for this. These traditional models often focus too heavily on the norm or the average, potentially glossing over individual uniqueness. For instance, while Super's model classifies career development into broad life stages, and Holland categorizes individuals by types of vocational interests, they might not always capture the nuances of each individual's journey. The person-environment fit and the theory of work adjustment with their emphasis on aligning values might sometimes miss out on the distinct experiences and situations unique to each individual. So while these theories provide invaluable frameworks, they occasionally risk pigeonholing individuals into categories or generalized life trajectories. And being aware of these limitations can help practitioners apply these models more effectively. A more modern career theory, actually developed from researchers here in Australia, that's become quite popular is the chaos theory of careers. The theory is inspired by the unpredictable nature of career choices. Remember the meta-analysis we spoke about earlier, pointing out that vocational interests predict about 50% of career decisions, but the other half is influenced by other factors. Research has shown that a staggering 70% of individuals reported that some serendipitous event had a considerable impact on their career decisions. It could be something as mundane as a scheduling conflict or a chance encounter with a field they'd never considered. Parental influence also plays a pivotal role. Numerous studies indicate that children often lean towards the professions of their parents. For example, if you grew up with a doctor for a parent, there's a higher likelihood you might don the white coat yourself. Similarly, a parent in law enforcement is also more likely to see their child following in their footsteps. Even significant life events, like a parent facing unemployment, can sway career choices, nudging children towards more stable professions. At its core, the chaos theory of careers suggests that career paths don't always follow a neat linear trajectory. Instead of a straight and steady march, they often more closely resemble a drunken stagger through the world of work. While tools like Holland's interest inventory might predict career choices with 50% accuracy, a score some might find commendable given the multitude of factors that influence these choices, it underscores the reality that career trajectories can be as unpredictable as trying to forecast the weather. And if career choices are influenced by change, serendipity, and complexity, 
then it raises critical considerations for how we guide individuals in their career pursuits and how organizations sculpt their career development programs. Emerging from the shadows of the chaos theory of careers is another intriguing concept, the protean career. Picture this, instead of following a singular professional path, individuals frequently pivot based on evolving interests. In a protean career, employees are the captains of their ship, steering their careers based on personal values rather than just market demands. Imagine a talented programmer who decides mid-career to pursue wildlife photography, or a lawyer who finds passion in baking. It's about diving into new waters, not because of external pressures, but because one's internal compass points there. Walters and colleagues conducted a fascinating 12-month study to understand the implications of this protean career mindset. They examined its potential influence on job-seeking activities, self-esteem, and eventual employment outcomes among folks who were unemployed at the start of the study. Their hypothesis was that a protean career orientation, which encourages embracing various jobs and careers throughout life, might help individuals bounce back faster after unemployment. The results were striking. Those aligned with protean thinking, even in the face of unemployment, exhibited higher self-esteem. They were more proactive in job hunting, scouring websites and sending out more applications. More importantly, they returned to the workforce more quickly. And it wasn't just about getting any job. Many experienced upward mobility, marking growth rather than just lateral moves or downward shifts. When we compare the traditional career with the protean pathway, it's clear that the two have different goals. Traditional careers focus on linear growth, think promotions and rising pay scales, but protean careers are more about psychological success. It's not just climbing the ladder, it's ensuring every rung aligns with personal values. Thinking about the psychological contract employees have when they join a firm, that unwritten agreement between the employee and the organization. In traditional careers, the employee displays commitment and loyalty to the organization, and in exchange, they get job security. They expect to be kept on for a long time. But for those on a protean journey, it's more about flexibility and having different experiences while maintaining a skill set that makes them attractive to different employers. When it comes to career mobility, traditionalists often aim upwards, seeking the next higher position. Those in protean careers might sidestep, seeking varied experiences over mere titles. What about the responsibility in managing one's career? Traditionalists often lean on their organizations, whereas those following the protean path are self-reliant. Those who prefer the traditional career pathway also tend to think of their careers as linear and focus on honing specific expertise, and they might rely heavily on formal training. They're the musicians who master a single musical instrument and follow where their skills take them. Protean careers, on the other hand, are like a winding scenic route. They emphasize continuous learning and often rely more on relationships and experiences than formal training. They're like the musicians who are constantly picking up new instruments and teaching themselves how to play. Let's talk a little bit more about the psychological contract. It's undergone quite the transformation in recent times. Traditional careers were rather straightforward in this sense. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. Employees displayed unwavering loyalty, put in hard work, and exchange, they could pretty much set their watch to regular promotions, salary bumps, and a cozy pension waiting at the end of it all. But more recently, the nature of this contract is evolving. Careers now are less about climbing corporate ladders and more about navigating professional lattices. We're not just looking for the next rung upward, we're often eyeing opportunities to the side, below, or even outside the ladder completely. This shift has given rise to what we call the protean psychological contract. It's less about stability and more about the organization providing opportunities for growth. Less about tenure and more about personal and professional evolution. Now, of course, many still crave that old school stability, but the tides are certainly shifting for many.